Hello everybody, and just here, and uh, welcome back to Shokei Shoujo no Virgin Road, episode 3. And uh, today, it seems we are going to be starting uh, the story in earnest. Episode 1 was essentially just an introduction to the world, um, to establish that there are people who come here from another world and uh, their uh, powers can go rampant and they're dangerous and there is a church that handles those um, dangerous individuals by assassinating them through the hands of their uh, priestesses. Uh, episode 2 was an establishment of the main um, plotline of the story, right? We have a girl who arrived here and she is effectively immortal because she can just rewind time and uh, the entire plot it will be, or at least is right now, about uh, trying to somehow get rid of her. I have my doubts as to uh, whether or not they will be able to get rid of her, uh, as to whether or not Meno will be able to get rid of her, and um, because she's been shown to be uh, important to Meno somehow. She's the person who appears in her dreams. And we also had the moment when they uh, met each other, they both reacted as if they met their long-lost soulmate and whatnot. So uh, I uh, believe that this will be the main conflict. Perhaps not right now. Right now we're gonna focus on uh, some sort of an adventure, traveling to uh, the capital of the church with the warrior princess in tow. And, but eventually the plot point will be uh, whether or not Meno will uh, follow through with her obligation to the church, or will she decide to go her own way. And uh, if she does, then what will be? What will she decide to do about uh, what's her name? The girl with time powers, Akari. I forgot. I forgot, and I don't have the list of characters open. So you know who I mean. The second protagonist. Uh, what will she do about her powers potentially running rampant if she decides to just not? kill her and not send her to her own world. Or maybe they both will go to Japan. Who knows? I have absolutely no clue. And uh, we haven't really seen any hints at it, so I can't really speculate too much on uh, on the topic. Uh, yeah, I think we should just start watching it. <laughs> because I I'm honestly not sure what else to talk about. So... Subs sound as usual. Uh, I have my notes here. Uh, right, is there anything here that needs discussing? No, not really. Yeah, Akari, I got it right. <laughs> there we go. Uh, right, and there's also Momo, who is madly in love with uh, Meno. Will it come into play? Probably, possibly. If Meno decides to run away with Akari, will Momo be tasked with hunting them down, or will she be an accomplice? I don't know. But there certainly are possibilities. Uh, but we just need to see which of those possibilities will actually come to fruition, and uh, we will do it very soon, because episode 3... Is it episode 3? It is episode 3. Episode 3 of uh, Virgin Road... Version by Saps, please, is gonna be starting in three, two, one, go. Okay, last time on Dragon Ball Z. Your concept of time. And this is Roybos with cinnamon and orange. Yeah, they're going to get on a train. How can it possibly go wrong? 
Will the train derail? Will someone attack the train because the princess is... Yes, someone will attack the train because the princess is here. <laughs> Entirely predictable. The train will stop and they will have to go the rest of the road to get them on foot or on horseback or something. Or they will be uh, uh, part of some wacky shenanigans going on. Yeah, it was too simple. Just go on a train, get to Garm, and get Akari into the execution chamber, and bada bim, bada boom, bada ban, bada dan. Three, four episodes, the anime is over. <laughs> of course, it wouldn't go this way. I wonder what significance would the princess have? She was introduced in the previous episode essentially for no reason. Just, hey, a tomboyish princess who ran away from the castle and she wants to go her own way or whatever. I'm assuming she will become relevant for some reason. And we have this scene of Meno going against probably Flair. Someone pointed out to me that the silhouette was actually Flair. I don't know, the hairstyle looks kind of different, but maybe it's Flair. Okay. Oh, would you look at that, assassins. You people brought them here, probably. <laughs> A fairy gun, so... I'm guessing, like... Uh, Arknights technology, where guns aren't really guns, they use arts. Of course. Of course. Of course. <laughs> We're getting some fan service? No. Cock blocked. <laughs> Quick job. Gag them so they can scream for help or something. Thank you, of course. Thanks anyway. She won't be a good girl, she won't wait here. She's gonna get dragged into something 100%. I miss the significance of that anymore. <laughs> I 
Oh, she has her ways of making you talk. Okay. Okay. A toothed garota. That's a weapon, all right. <laughs> It hasn't been shown explicitly, but I can tell that some seeds of uh, doubt are being sown in Menno's mind. Yeah, I can see that navel dent. <laughs> About the people of another world that were summoned by your father? Okay, so Momo's weapon of choice is a garrota. Interesting. Uh, all of the priestesses we've seen so far use uh, daggers. I love the effects of magic on her. Those white glowy outlines. Once dead and vaporized, ooh, I like how her teeth were rendered. That's a lot of attention to detail. Also, it seems Ashuna also uses some magic. Yep, she's definitely using magic. Fire magic. That's a lot of fire. Okay, I'm liking Momo more and more. And Momo is both. <laughs> okay, how long until we become friends? Anchor oscillation. A uh, chainsaw, essentially. Yep. Yep. Oh, I fucking love it. A chainsaw blade made of a chain soul. <laughs> Bombs?
bombs. Primary red gem. A fancy word for a magic bomb? Okay, I guess those gems create... Void? And just... Suck things up? Primary red, active night... Cool. On one hand, what the absolute fuck, on the other... Cool. <laughs> the magic system in this world is super interesting. A gem you swallow and it sucks up your body, connects with other gems and summons a knight? What the flying fuck? So it can be a sword and it can be a whip. And it can be a boomerang. Blimey! She has another. Okay. Talk about convenient. Okay, I guess that wasn't enough to kill the knight, and now the train will derail. I guess a kick was enough. <laughs> okay, so that's how we take the train out of commission, and... Uh... Huh? The fuck did Akari just do? Is Akari's power running rampant already? Or did she die, or... And she got scared.
do what? That will invoke Thread Gale. And overload it. Make it explode. Yep, self destruct. Electric Connect Scripture. Damn, the magic system. Holy shit. Why exactly did you not want to use it, though? Is it tiring? Doesn't seem like she's particularly tired. Are there no other people with magic power on the train? Or is she gonna use Akari's powers? Is she gonna ask Akari for Ether? Or... What are you planning, Mano? What are you planning? Okay, so exactly what I was thinking. Oh. Huh. That's an interesting tidbit. What does she mean by that exactly, though? Etheric connect. I don't think what she's feeling is pain. <laughs> I don't think what she's feeling is pain. Uh, last moment? Last moment stop. Not even a bump.
Hmm. Okay, theory. I have to note it down. Okay, we're gonna talk about it. After the reaction. But Akari rewinded the time! Oh! 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 Oh, that's amazing. I was wondering why Akari just rewinded those few seconds, but maybe she didn't rewind the few seconds. She rewinded the entire crash to a certain moment that just happened to be a few seconds before what, what happened. Oh... Okay, I dig it. I dig it. I also love how it was shown in the background, essentially. We weren't shown Akari actually rewinding the time. We were just shown a little bit of a rewind and left to wonder what the fuck just happened. Whoever decided to dismiss this show for any reason whatsoever is a fucking idiot. This is some genuinely good shit. Uh, that, that's some good stuff. Oh, that's some good stuff. That's some good stuff. Uh, let the fact that I'm actually taking notes on it be a testament to how good it, it is. I, I don't take notes. On many shows, I have notes on Symphogear, a couple of on Tokyo Twenty Four Cool, and on Virgin Road, mostly Symphogear and Virgin Road. Let that be a testament, and let us go through it again. Uh huh. Full screen, please. Yeah, last time on Dragon Ball Z, re-establishing what happened, but I like how we don't spend much time re-establishing it. It's like, what, 30 seconds, that's it. Not a, a whole chunk of, a, uh, of an episode. Also, it makes sense. Meno laying dead here... And at the end of the OP, or somewhere along the end, uh, Akari reviving her. That's pretty much literally what happened this episode. Meno failed and died, everybody died, and Akari rewinded the time to save everyone. Subconsciously, I have no doubt, but regardless. Huh. You think he summoned other worlders in thirst for power. Uh, that's also a very interesting thing about this world, is that there doesn't seem to be any sort of, like, a global threat to warrant the uh, summoning of otherworldly heroes. 
Uh, there is no waves of catastrophe, there is no demon lord uh, awakening, nothing of the sort. It seems like the rulers of this world really are summoning the other worlders as WMDs, essentially. Interesting, very, very interesting approach to the topic. Very, very interesting. Also, guns and sunglasses. That's another thing. It is not often that we see an influence of isekai heroes in isekai worlds. Uh, even though very often we are told that, oh yeah, you're not the first one, uh, there is a demon lord awakening every hundred of years, and every one hundred years we summon uh, heroes from another world, and what, yada yada yada. But we never really see consequences of it. Uh, let's just take Shield Hero as an example. We know that uh, Naofumi, Motoyasu, Reni, Itz and uh, Itsuki aren't the first ones. Uh, in the last episode, we even learned that there are other heroes, like Seven Star Heroes or something like that, and some of them are also summoned. And uh, they've been summoning people to this world for potentially millennia. Every time waves of catastrophe happen, they summon heroes. And yet, those heroes never really left a mark on the world. Right? Or at least it seems like they didn't really leave a mark. Uh, Merlomark is exactly as it, I'm assuming, was at the very beginning. It's just a medieval city. There is no street lamps, there is no cars, there is no steam engines, nothing of the sort. Uh, there's that other nation uh, where uh, Mirelia was, uh, Queen Mirelia was, uh, that had like smokestacks and whatnot. So maybe that was a country that was brought up in uh, technological levels by heroes from another world, but I don't know. And now that I think about it, I think the only other isekai show where I've seen two, the, un the only two other isekai shows where I've seen uh, the actual impact uh, the heroes have on the other world were gate, because we see things like uh, people from the other world buying pens or uh, palace kids playing with a football, right? And um, Log Horizon, where although it's not so much the other world part that evolves with uh, Heroes of Log Horizon, it's the cities that are under the control of Log Horizon people that uh, develop more. So it's not, uh, not, can, not really the same thing, and uh, there's also no precedent for previous heroes that would have elevated the world. I think this is actually like the first show I'm watching, the first isekai show, the first piece of isekai media actually. I don't think I've seen it done in any of the isekai mangas that I'm reading, uh, where it was the previous heroes that were summoned here previously that managed to improve this world somehow. Maybe not improve, but... Uh, advance its techno technology. Hmm. Uh, the youngest daughter of King Grizarika, Ashina Grizarika. Yeah, terrorists with ether guns. Of course, their first order is for her to undress, obviously. Uh... I really, really, really like Momo. I don't know why, but I have a weakness for 
violent Ksogaki. <laughs> Don't judge me, okay? Don't judge me. But I have a weakness for characters like her. Violent and... You know... Her. <laughs> yeah, they want hostages. And this moment, it wasn't shown here. Uh, but this moment and the earlier talk with Akhari and in the previous episode when Mena was also talking with this kid, I have a feeling uh, that Meno is slowly um, her teaching, the teachings she got from the Church of Faust are slowly cracking. Or rather, maybe they aren't cracking yet, but there are uh, structural faults being introduced bit by bit. There's some weathering happening there. There are no cracks yet. But all it takes now is one big event that starts cracking the uh, layer, the shell uh, that she's wearing, the shell of the teachings of Faust. Yeah, that's, that's something I'm willing to bet on. That eventually she will go against the church. And I'm going to note it down, actually. Um... M Meno goes against the church. There we go. And uh, no, I'm gonna talk about my theory uh, near the end, uh, near the place where I came up with it. Uh, priestess by the name of Momo. I like the okay, so uh, Ashuna likes fashion and uh, she likes the beauty of a body line, of a human body, and you can see that she's wearing barely any clothes. And she appreciates that Momo is wearing very skin tight clothes. So skin tight you can see her navel. So skin tight you can see her navel. I wanted to emphasize that. <laughs> and of course, they have to fight, because of course they have to. Uh, I like that Momo's weapon of choice is non-standard. I'm always a sucker for when uh, the main character of the show uh, doesn't use a bog standard weapon. Right? Um, Meno uses dagger and spells. Momo uses a, um, like a survival uh, saw. Uh, I'm gonna tell you what I have in mind. Mm, real quick. It, it's like a real actual thing. Survival saw. Yeah, exactly. That's what I meant. Mm. Which one will it be? Survival, so there we go. Yeah. Thing, things like this. Right? You keep it in a, in your pocket or somewhere, and you can just unroll it and uh, use it as a saw, because it's essentially a chainsaw. Right? Like here. That's what Momo is using as her weapon. and uh, And I fucking love it. I fucking love it because it's very, very, very non-standard. Meno using a dagger, eh, uh, could have used a better weapon, but I can see why she's using a dagger. She is an assassin, and Momo also is an assassin. That's why she uses this, which essentially serves as a garrota for her, another assassin weapon. Uh, but to go back to what I was uh, talking about, I'm a sucker for when uh, the main character uses a non-standard weapon. Something that isn't a sword, I beg of you. I have enough of swordsmen. I'm, like, no more swordsmen, please. Please, I beg of you. If you're thinking of 
writing an isekai light novel or manga, please, no swords. There's so many medieval weapons that you can use that aren't swords. Rapier would be great. The fuck, saber. Saber would already be a step up over a sword. Uh, axe. Uh, blunt weapons like a warhammer or a mace. A spear. A lance. A uh, bar dish. A uh, fucking uh, halberd. Right? Something, anything that isn't a fucking sword. Please. Please. I beg of you. <laughs> Enough with the fucking swords. Uh... If I had swung this royal crested sword with full force, you know, a mere threat so blade would never have stopped it. I won. Yeah, then what's the big idea? She just wants to fight and talk. She doesn't really want to kill you. She just wants to get the information out of you. What business does she have? What business that does the princess have with the other worlders? That's what I'm wondering about. Also, Anchor Oscillation. I love how she... Okay, show it already. Yep, I love how she turned her uh, chain saw into a chain sword. I love it. I love it. Sure, it's a sword, but at least it's an original sword. <laughs> uh, primary red gem that sucks up your body. And then activate primary red. And uh, summons a knight. <laughs> cool. Uh, attack from behind, but of course Momo is being cheeky. Uh, she has the flesh fang. That's the first time we see her with a flesh fang, and it really adds to her brattiness right now. Mesugaki needs correction. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I love this meme and. <laughs> I love Mesugaki in its correction. Uh, if only you had died. Okay, they're fighting. But suddenly. Zawardo! And we're getting a time skip. Yep. What was that? That was disturbing. And they no longer have the will to fight. <laughs> hmm. Electric connect... Etheric connect scripture. 10-9 invoke. For so long as thou seekest the bliss, there will be one to bear thy calamity. Sorry. <clears throat> For so long as thou seekest bliss, there will be one to bear thy calamity. That's how you should read it. <laughs> we can connect, and I can suck out your power and use it to stop the train. Etheric connect scripture, remote invoke, kneel, kneel before the front gate, for its path leads to the Lord. And she's not feeling pain. I don't know what exactly she's feeling, but it doesn't look like pain. Unless she enjoys pain. I don't judge. I don't want to king shame her, but... Okay, she she's feeling ticklish. That's all. Don't read too much into it. She's just ticklish. 
her body isn't reacting violently, and and there's a sheer amount of it. Okay, medium mana etheric boost maintain invoke new be okay. Uh, right, this is where my theory appeared. A potential solution to other worlders, perhaps, probably, maybe, being able to live in this world uh, without the need to assassinate them. Uh, the connection between them, how Mena was able to suck out a lot of her power, a lot of power from Akari, and uh, neither of them were worse for the wear. Mm, Akari, because reasons, and Menno because she was trained in some way that allowed her to be not affected by the transfer of ether. And that makes me wonder, what if the other worlders could be paired up with priestesses so that the priestesses can keep their powers in check? Right? Like, suck out their power once a week, or something, so that it doesn't go uh, berserk. That's that's a, a, just an idea, just a loose idea. I don't think we're gonna get to anywhere near close to a potential um, non-destructive solution for uh, other worlders, but this could be how we might be able to handle uh, Meno and Akari both living in more or less peace. Just have Meno suck out Akari's power every now and again, so that it doesn't go out of control. I don't know how feasible that is, but it's just a theory. A game theory. Priestesses are supposed to be pure, just, and strong. Uh -huh. Got involved with such a nuisance. Anything relevant that happened here that I might have missed? No, not really. They're just shit-talking each other. And I can see that they will eventually become the bestest of friends. <laughs> and right, what if I had failed to stop the train... Maybe that actually happened once. Maybe it did. And I have a feeling it might have. What kind of power does your pure concept have concealed within? It is a pure concept of time. So, theoretically, it has unlimited power, unlimited uses. Right? If you control time, you control essentially everything and anything. She's immortal. Um, should she uh, age, she can just reverse her aging process. If someone uh, dear to her dies of old age, she can just revert them to back when they were alive. If she really doesn't like you, she can just turn you in, she can just, you know, age you in a second until you turn to dust. Or she can just turn you into a fucking embryo. There is unlimited potential with the pure concept of time. It's hard to think of any other potential pure concepts that would be more destructive and uh, ones that would have more potential than the concept of time. Uh, because if the concept of time can be both destructive and constructive, uh, if you have a concept of destruction itself, it can only be destructive. If you have the concept of void, it can only be destructive. If you have a concept of healing, it cannot be destructive. The concept of time can be both. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing particularly important in the ending.
there we go. That was episode 3 of Shokei Shoujon of Virgin Road. And it's getting deeper and deeper and deeper. And it raises more questions. And I love it. I I absolutely do. I had no idea that a series like that existed. I don't think I even encountered the manga, if there is a manga of it. Uh, this is my completely first uh, um, encounter with it, and uh, I'm in love. I really am. Everything so far has been great, from the uh, magic system that seems very well... Um, constructed, very well thought out, and first and foremost, original. Uh, they aren't shouting out the names of their attacks. Uh, they use those uh, invocations and seals and scriptures and whatnot. Uh, the world that works on ether and is so advanced, there is... It's basically like industrial evolution, industrial revolution uh, times in this world. Um, the consequences of so many other worlders uh, having been in this world already, that what sticks out to me the most in particular. Because as I mentioned, uh, there isn't many series that handle the fact that there were other uh, arrivals from another world already before in the times past. N really not many series. Actually, I think this is the only one in my, not only recent memory, in my overall memory. Uh, I mentioned um, Log Horizon, I mentioned Gate. Okay, Log Horizon doesn't fit because it's the fresh arrivals that are changing the world. Gate kind of does because it's not the first time that people of Earth came to that world. Uh, the Empire is um, based on the Romans, because Romans uh, used to go there, and every other race in that world is also an arrival from another world, so... Sure, okay, but besides Gate and uh, Virgin Road, I haven't seen any other series that handles that. Mm. What else? The mechanic of time, Akari's power, that's also very... Uh, the portrayal of it, the portrayal of it is very interesting. Because until the very end we are still kind of left wondering, did Akari actually revert the time? Or did she just revert like a minute? Maybe she was uh, killed by one of the uh, terrorists. Maybe she gets scared and she reverted the time. Maybe something else happened. Or maybe the entire train actually did crash and everyone died and she reverted the time subconsciously. I think that it is exactly how many things it went that she failed and Akari subconsciously reverted the time. But it's very interesting that it can happen. Uh, that at any point, now, sure, we see it show there's the Zawardo effect, and uh, we as the audience know uh, that something odd happened. Uh, Meno and Momo and uh, Ashuna also seem to have noticed. Uh, but it's very interesting that it can happen, that it can happen subconsciously. And uh, even after Akari's death. She doesn't have to be alive to invoke the concept of time. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. There is also the princess. I still don't quite know what her agenda is. Does she want to help the other worlders? Uh, does she want to... Uh, get rid of them herself? Does she want to just ask them about something? We don't know. She just uh, went ahead and fought Momo, and that's all we know about her, really. Not much more. Hmm. 
Uh, there was one more moment that I kind of missed. Uh, gotta go back to it, try to find it. Um, when uh, Meno was leaving the cart with um, where uh, where Akari was. Uh, Akari said something to her and Meno kind of stopped for a moment and I'm not sure why. Uh, this moment. Yeah. Uh, Akari says, please be careful. I don't want to be left behind anymore. I'll be fine. See you soon. Wait, anymore? Akari's unresolved trauma from her world? Maybe. Maybe she won't... Maybe she's not gonna want to go back to her own world and the jig's gonna be up. Because they're gonna try to force her to go back, and she's she's not gonna want to go back. Or is Akari conscious of her powers, and uh, she somehow saw Meno dying in the crash and her being alone? She peered into the future. Or is this very moment already a rewind? Timey wimey shenanigans do that. You can never be sure of what exactly is going on. Okay, I think I think I'm gonna leave it here. I'm not gonna try to read any more into it, uh, except I'm gonna note it down. Uh, Akari has. Bad memories from original world. Who did it be? And hear me out. Uh, because we see that Meno dreams about the classroom and Akari is in that classroom. Could it be? that Meno herself actually used to be classmates with Akari, but then she gets summoned to another world. She has no memory of that, but Akari remembers her as her former classmate, and that's why she says, I don't want to be left behind. That's worth noting down, if nothing else. Uh, Meno used to be classmates with Akari then got his uh, guide and lost memories okay We'll see. I'm not entirely sure about this theory, but again, it's just a theory, an anime theory. Thanks for watching. <laughs> no, but really, thanks for watching. I don't think I have uh, anything more to say on the topic, so uh, you guys, uh, it's your turn to say something on the topic. What did you think of this episode? What did you think of my reaction? What do you think of my theories? Just please, I beg of you, no spoilers. I want to watch it blind, I want to enjoy it blind. If you ever have any doubt whether or not something you want to post is a spoiler, stay on the side of caution and just don't post it. Uh, if you do want to talk about spoilery stuff with fellow fans of uh, the show, you can join me on Discord. Uh, there is a Virgin Road channel there where you can post uh, messages in spoiler mode and uh, I'm not gonna click them, I'm not gonna see them 
but other people who are up to date with the source material perhaps will be able to and uh, you will be able to have a discussion and uh, also you can use that channel to just post non-spoilery content and I'm just gonna see it and we can talk about it uh, in more real time than YouTube comments allow. Um, like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, but tell me why so I can improve, subscribe to the channel to be notified of future releases, not only Virgin Road but also Spy X Family, uh, Simple Gear Jean, Mm, uh, review Starlight, uh, uh, Shield Hero Season 2, and uh, Skeleton Knight in Another World. Is that all? I think that's all. Yeah, I think that's all the shows that I'm reacting to. That's a lot. I, I'm having trouble remembering all of them, but you can find them in the cards somewhere in the corner, or you can find them on my channel, just... You know, click the link and go there. Um, you can also support me monetarily if you want. Uh, on Patreon, link is in the description down below. For just a dollar, you get a role on my Discord server, and it gives you access to a Patreon-only channel where I post some sneak peeks and uh, stuff like that. So if you want that, just a dollar is enough. And for ten bucks, you get early access to a non-seasonal shows. That is Symphony G and Review. Starlight. Uh, share this video with other people who you know would enjoy it because the more you spread the word about my videos, the more YouTube itself, uh, you know, gets them trend. Maybe not trending, none of my videos have ever been trending, but it gets them into people's recommendations and uh, I'm getting some uh, um, natural, organic growth to the channel and it's always nice to see happening. Anything else I would need to show? No, I don't think so. Like, subscribe, comment, uh, Patreon, Discord. That's gonna be it. Uh, yeah, that is gonna be it for me for today. So as always, do all the good stuff. And uh, I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Cheers. And here's yet another Patreon benefit. You get to be in the credits of my videos.